欢迎收睇《艺方星期天》，我系 Billy 李志芬。旧年五月，我哋邀请过假声男高音 Rambo 嚟到我哋嘅节目现场。咁当时咧，佢仲系香港演艺学院嘅学生，而家已经毕业啦。今日咧，我哋再次邀请到佢上嚟，讲下佢近期嘅音乐动向。咁第二节咧，大家千祈唔好行开啊！有一個人，佢嘅作品咧，你可能每一日都會見到。咁譬如你而家打開銀包，喺三袋褲袋咧就即刻揾到。又譬如你飲緊嘅紙包飲品嘅包裝，飲奶茶落嘅砂糖，行開嘅商場、酒店，甚至我哋香港電台呢一度咧都有。咁佢就係幾十年嚟為香港同埋全球多個品牌做平面設計嘅設計師石漢瑞。石漢瑞幾十年嚟一直喺香港為商業品牌創造品牌形象，可能唔係個個人都知道佢個名，不過佢嘅平面設計無處不在。今年係石漢瑞九十歲誕辰，亦都係佢嘅設計公司喺香港開業六十週年。佢一直以跨文化傳意嘅能力見稱。To me, it's so um, so obvious because uh, I am cross-cultural. Uh, I was uh, uh, born in uh, Vienna, uh, grew up in New York, and uh, I've lived in uh, Hong Kong for sixty uh, years now. It's, it's un unbelievable cross-cultural communication, trying to talk to other cultures and do it visually. Taking away from one culture something that is useful for another one, you know, uh, certain Chinese characters that maybe look like something that's European. Se Han Sui, 一九三四年喺维也纳出生。纳粹德国喺一九三八年吞并奥地利之后，为咗逃避反犹太人情绪，佢同屋企人移居美国。佢喺亨特学院修读艺术，之后喺耶鲁大学完成平面设计硕士课程，师承当时受人敬重嘅平面设计师兼艺术总监保罗兰德。I saw an early book by Paul Rand, and it was、uh, fascinating, and that's what、uh, started me to understand design rather than art. A designer tries to solve.、Uh, His clients' problems.、Uh, an artist tries to solve his own problems. So, in other words,、uh, whatever problems I have, it doesn't matter、uh, because I'm working for the client. But if I were a painter, I would be trying to communicate my feelings. That has nothing to do with graphic design. 石康瑞喺巴黎索邦大学继续深造，翻到纽约之后，佢接受派遣到亚洲工作，担任 The Asia Magazine 设计总监。喺一九六一年，凭住一份为期九个月嘅工作合约嚟到香港。This is what I do, contrast. You know, so this is a Chinese lady from history, and this is a contemporary. Chinese girl, and they go together nicely. And I was、uh, asked to do some other jobs, not for the Asia magazine, things like packaging and、uh, annual reports and all sorts of things. Hong Kong Dong Sai Manhua Hui's character is often his creative energy. 而其中一個體現呢種文化匯聚嘅早期作品，係香港希爾頓酒店嘅標誌，兩個字母 H 嘅設計，令人聯想起中文雙喜嘅喜字。一九六四年，石康瑞自立門户，本來九個月嘅合約就變成佢對香港嘅終生承諾，其中部分嘅香港鈔票都係佢嘅代表作。Well. It's progress.、Uh, at the very top is the dragon. At the bottom、uh, is the fish. It goes from water to land to the sky, so that each of the animals 
is part of a hierarchy, which to me was much more interesting than uh, having a guaipaw with a blonde hair and a torch or something. You know, that this was Chinese culture, and that's what's excited me. It began with the St. Andrew's flag, which had a two red and two white triangles, and I squared that and then added the two red on the outside so that it made a nice compact uh, logo. It was fine, but for some reason they dropped all of that and uh, changed the typography, which I think is more classic. And uh, we now have uh, something like that, which um, I don't agree with it. It's not as busy as it used to be, but it's still a wonderful place of getting around. It was the right time and the right place, and I was at the right stage uh, to be here. I'm very happy with my career. I, I can't think of anything better to say because it's Hong Kong that made me. In some ways, I make Hong Kong too. What people ask me is, uh, uh, what's your favorite job? And I say the next one. I'm going to keep going because the nice thing about uh, graphic design is you can do what you want. I have no complaints. Yin 亦係博物館首次以單一設計師及平面設計作為主題嘅展覽。The first two sections deal with his early life and then the point at which he arrives in Hong Kong. Really thanks to Henry, he lent us, uh, lent us a lot of his personal artifacts, um, really to show how he became a designer. And it's quite an intimate viewing experience because you're looking at personal photographs, some documentation from his um, student years, and some of the individuals that he encountered. The second two sections, they deal with how Hong Kong's development and Henry's work for his different clients uh, actually run in parallel. So you can almost see a certain kind of history of Hong Kong through a number of Henry's works. We made a selection based on works of Henry's that most people would have encountered in their everyday lives. So you'll see things that probably you would have been able to see in a supermarket, and in particular, the banknotes that he's designed. That actually is a testament to how effective Henry's strategy and his designs have been that they're still being used today. For thousands of years, silk, the delicate yet durable natural fibre known for its luster, shine and strength has been associated with beauty and luxury. Its origins can be traced back more than 5,000 years to the Neolithic age in China when sericulture, the art of raising silk worms, developed. But it wasn't until about 100 years BCE, before the Common Era, that silk became a significant trading item. Here at the Indra and Harry Banga Gallery at the City University of Hong Kong, you'll have a chance to learn more about Silk's 2,000-year journey to the rest of the world in the exhibition, A Passion for Silk, The Road from China to Europe. 
Divided into seven sections, the exhibition features around 150 items from China, India, France and Italy. They illustrate the value, history and development of silk production and weaving, its interactions with trade, art, fashion and technology, and the cultural role it played. Among the exhibits are examples of imperial dress from the Tang through to the Qing dynasties. The exhibition also shows how France came to dominate the silk industry from the 17th century to the end of the 19th, and how the material influenced the European courts and aristocracy of the time. The final section focuses on the industrialization and modernization of silk production. You can catch the exhibition up to 1st September, but don't forget to register online beforehand to arrange a visit. All right, Rambu, welcome back to the works. Thank you for inviting. It's been a year since we last saw you. So to begin with, what have you been up to, uh, whether it's musically or in your own personal life? The first thing that I'm going to say is that I graduated. Congratulations. <laughs> I got my Bachelor of Music uh, in the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts. Yeah. Right. And then apart from uh, graduating... Uh... So I had in my thesis, yeah. I had my graduation recital. And then since I graduated, I thought it would be amazing to go to some graduation trips with my friends. Yeah, so they were my time. <laughs> nice, right. So now you've graduated, you're not studying anymore, but you're still writing songs, you're still composing. So uh, let's talk about that a bit. Uh, have, you, have you released any songs uh, since last year or have you been working on any songs? I've been working on them. Mm. Actually, I've recorded like three singles. Mm. Yeah, but I'm hoping to like embellish them or to polish them a bit more before releasing them. Right. right. Yeah. So, Rambu, I know you've been working on a, a few different songs recently. Uh, one of them, Vitamin M, is in Cantonese. Um, in, in, in the past, a lot of your songs were written in English. So how different is it composing or writing using Cantonese? The songs, they're released it, um, like by the sea, do you understand? I wrote them at the piano. And usually my songwriting process is like some random chords and then the melody. And sometimes, um, there comes lyrics on my mind, and usually they're in English. So um, if there are lyrics on my mind, usually they're, they are English songs. But for Vitamin M, I really couldn't figure out the lyrics. So I decided to just write the melodies and then um, try to write a Cantonese song by and other artists. Right. Yeah. And as, um, you know, uh, for those who don't know, you're trained as a countertenor uh, in classical uh, sort of singing. Um, in terms of the language itself, is it very different using your skills to sing in English versus Cantonese? Very different. Can you tell yeah. us about it? Like in English, I think it's more free. Like you can sing whatever you want and some like, yeah. But in Cantonese, you have to fit in the uh, vowels and the, and the pitch of the word. So you cannot alter too much when you are performing. Right. Like for by the sea, I can sing like, Oh, by the sea. Like a little, like a, um, a turn in the, in the voice. Mm. But for Cantonese, it will be weird. Like, yeah. So, so the, the, the limitations uh, for Cantonese are a bit more than English. Yeah. Okay, well, um, let's talk a bit about, you know, your songwriting itself. Uh, what things inspire you these days? You've mentioned you love sitting by the piano and you just love playing. Yeah, that's so, my hobby, yeah. So tell, tell us a bit more how, how it works for you. You know, how do you write a song? Um, I just sit at a piano and feel by ear and, oh, this chord sounds good. And then I just continue. Like, I've written something like this, I remember. Love. 
Yeah. <laughs> Very and nice. And it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. Until you develop like a, yeah, a song. Yeah, a whole song. But when I hear you play, you know, because um, you were telling me earlier, you, you are not classically trained on the piano. It, everything yeah. is self-taught. So where did the influence, because I'm hearing jazz, I'm hearing a bit of soul, you know, where do all these things kind of uh, creep in for you? Yeah, because I, even though I'm classically trained, I also listen to like a lot of songs, mm. a lot of different genres, and I really love jazz. So I listen to Elvis Gerald and you know all the, and the Brazilian uh, bossa nova stuff. Yeah, and I also love listening to like some pop. Yeah, so I think it's um, a tiny bit of everything together. Mm. Yeah. And I, find, I feel like when I listen to your songs, they're quite, um, you've got a lot of different things going on. So um, as a songwriter, when, when do you decide if something is complete or when do you decide this needs more work? Well, um, since I'm doing pop music and I really want my songs to be remembered. So the standard to me is if I remember the melodies after I've composed it uh, for like a day or so, if the melodies are haunting enough, mm. I think they are good enough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's, that's great because you want to be, you know, you have to believe it in yourself, mm -hmm. right? For others to believe in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and apart from the songwriting itself, uh, you also do production as well, right? Um, are you still doing a lot of production these days? Uh, a lot of productions. Productions for my songs. And I've also produced another song for a singer. Right. Yeah. And why do you choose to um, do productions for yourself? Is it something you enjoy as much as songwriting? Maybe because I'm kind of like a perfectionist and a sort of like a control freak in terms of music production. And sometimes uh, I want things under my control, even though they may not be the best. But uh, yeah. Right. Uh, this is why. <laughs> <laughs> and cut all the costs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's also a big thing. Um, and, and many people are probably not aware of this, but uh, you know, you are also a big fan of uh, certain aspects of K-pop, which yes. you don't hear in your music. So tell us about that relationship with being a fan of K-pop and maybe how that translates into production or uh, songwriting. So lately I've been really into new jeans. I love their sound. Um, comparing to other K-pop songs, their songs are like, simple in a way and yet very haunting and addictive i would say so i really love their songs mm. yeah. and eventually uh you, you know you have a collection of songs would you like to do a release sometime in the future yes of course <laughs> yeah 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 i hope yeah <laughs> <laughs> cool well we've got you here today Rimbu, and we would love to hear a song uh what, what would you like to perform for us in the studio today so today I'm going to perform By the Sea. It's a song about the calmness you feel when you're around the person you like. It's like you don't have to say too much. You just enjoy the presence of that person. Yeah. Very nice. Well, Rimbu, thank you for coming in. I look forward to hearing By the Sea. Thank you. You said you wanna go to the sea To recall some good memories But let me tell you, my baby Those memories will always be here As long as you stay here with me And promise you won't be my tea Tell me something I wanna hear Oh honey, are you clear? Oh baby, Sit next to me, simply ordinary and lingeringly. Oh, by the sea, complain to me, simple tranquility, but I feel eternity. Yeah, hey, da 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 
feel so, so free. You don't care what I did or do, but you value who I'm to be. My life is a comedy, cause you're my remedy. Thanks for doing so much for me. How I love you more, baby, you will see. Oh.